Hello and welcome to the next episode of this is our series which is all about this Lego room of course my life. Now before we talk about what we're going to be doing today I'm going to show you what we've already done. So the Lego Batman stuff is in and finished apart from the masking tape I still need to take that off but downtown Gotham is on its way so I just need to finish the museum and then we will be good to go. As it comes around we have got the Joker and of course the shadow box and that is all looking nice and smart. Now in the next upload from this one I do believe is all going to be about this fantastic set which is the new Dungeons and Dragons. Now I've already done a video comparison of those two sets hence this table because well they're massive sets and it's difficult to do. So what we are going to be doing in the next upload from that is getting that placed, all of the rings placed and I've got to figure out where I'm going to be putting the Colosseum but that has nothing to do with today's upload. So with that being said, let's get to it. So today's upload is all about the live stream studio, which is this room that I am stood in. Now we did at one point make very, very good progress until the roof started to leak. Long story short, I lost a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff got damaged. I have got over it, apart from the instruction booklets. That still hurts to this day, but I've now refelted the roof and it is all all right. We've had some massive, massive downpours and everything is good. The video might be quite dark, because this light flickers on camera. So I'm just going to be using natural light coming through a huge window that we've got at the moment. So hopefully it's not too dark. Now, me and Jay's Toy Collection UK, which is this chap. Some boarding for the shed area. So all sorts of things happening in this video. As we know, why? Goodness me, well, this is what well, a segment this is, as it accelerates as we head towards the motorway. <laughs> Who was holding on for dear life, as you can tell. That clip does make me chuckle. He was holding the camera in one hand, a tub of paint in the other, which in all fairness, he thought the lid wasn't on because the guy at the shop opened up a lid, but it was double lidded. I've never seen anything like it in my life, but that's all in a different upload. But for today's upload, we also went there to get a load of timber to actually now sort out all the backing. So what I need to do right now is, apart from probably have a massive sob and cry, figure out the best way to do this. I need to basically clear where I'm stood, which is simple enough. All of these shelves need to come off. So all the sets on these shelves are going in the actual uh, Lego room itself. So they're not going to be down here. So this is going in our Star Wars display, as is this. This is going to go into our mythical uh, display with the Dungeons and Dragons set and all that kind of thing when that gets purchased. So those sets need to go on this table. This table is, I just sc scrape it all over like I, normally, like I normally do. Pull all of these out, because don't forget, I did fill this up with all of the older sets to actually use this as a proper studio with pieces and things like that. So we are, we are there. And then I've got the drill to take off all the strips because I was going to use it as a different type of shelving, which I am not going to be doing any more. Then there's going to be one or two tricky things to move like those. There are actually bits of window, which is that. So they're different individual colored glass panes. So I've got to be very, very careful with them. So they do need a new hidey hole. So you're going to go to a time lapse. I've got to figure out where you're going to get placed. And then you're going to see me run around like a headless chicken for a good while taking all this down stripping all of this down then i'll catch back up with you to show you the space to show you what we have planned for the space with regards to being a hybrid of toys and lego yes so it's going to be a very very interesting thing then fingers crossed the boards are the right height they can just come in straight in here i can then just bosh them on nice and quickly then the paint comes out and then we're done it sounds far too simple and easy, doesn't it? I don't really think that is going to be, I don't really think that is going to be the case, but this is going to take a good amount of time just to get off. So the time lapse itself might be a long time. So rather than me talking to the camera sort of for the next half an hour, let me get all these big bits and pieces out and then I can spend some good time explaining all of the different bits and pieces that are to come.
So as per normal, that was much harder than what it needed to be, but you are moved. Now, as I was dragging that around, have potentially thought of a scenario that would suck. In fact, I think what I need to do is I need to do an adult version of these where everybody has an 18 year old password where it's completely uncut because the language, I've made up some new words yesterday and today, phenomenal entertainment if you guys and girls could listen to that back. Me getting stuck, I fell over over that way, there's bits I have to cut out of this. So this will make you chuckle. Um, this is the Calyx that fell apart and all the dowels basically crumbled and I screwed this together. So hence why I've just dragged it with everything in there because it's got no flex to it whatsoever. So this is super, super, super sturdy. I don't know if there's enough spin. I don't know if I've got enough space in this room to twist this round. But this will be the last thing that we do anyway. Because like I said, the shelving has to come off. Then all these white bits and pieces have to come off. Then the new boards go on. The lick of paint goes on. And then we go from there. So this is now going to be in the back of my mind for a little while. I will run you through the plan of attack. So you can see we have a nice corner. Like I said, there's still quite a lot to move, but the plan is, is that this monstrosity, hello pumpkin, is going to go across this side just here. And then across here, it's just going to be a toy wall, which is going to be like a mint on card. So I'm not too sure why I couldn't have done it just the other way around and kept that there. There must be a reason why, hello. Um, Oh, it's because the calyx fits better over there. That's the that's the reason. That's the reason why. So it, it takes less space if it goes against the back wall, and then I basically create a um, create a corner, and then I can bring this other I can bring this other calyx in or extend extend what I want to do. So basically, I'm going to be sat in this corner like that for the live streams and everything else. Right? She's been very dramatic because she wants to cuddle. So I will give her a cuddle, and then I'll crack. some of that but not all of it so we've taken it all off done some bits and pieces so where i'm stood now look it's clear and that's how i will be for the live streams and the unboxing stuff and obviously making it as a nice studio slight problem it looks like it's gonna rain so i can't move what i was gonna move out the door because obviously the plan in my head was it goes straight out the door get the boards on really quickly and then bring it back and I've had to put all the stuff out that's just waterproof. So that's why it's taking, it's taking as it always does, slightly longer than normal. Now, obviously all the brackets, what I will do is I will tape all of those together. And then all of these bits and pieces that are down here, will just go a little bit further down in one of the next ones. So I will sort of move it down as we go. Now this timber, um, I've kept in here because I might be able to use it. So I don't think the boards that I've got will go all the way down. They're six foot boards. But obviously I want to have it covered from the top, um, which is what you're going to see on camera. And then there'll be a gap at the bottom, I think. So I could squeeze that in potentially, depending on if not, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see it. So I don't really care, to be honest. Um, right. So I now need to get the timber out of the truck, carry it all the way down into here, place it up against, see if it works, basically screw it on and then see, see what it's like. So I've just brought the timber in, as you've seen now, there's very good potential we might have fluked this because I don't think you would have measured it this precisely. Now, if I just bosh those straight into the floor, because I need to clear everything off, the next board touching this is to the top. 
So we have no gappage whatsoever. Obviously, I've moved the rest of those bits and pieces um, as as we go. To be honest, I didn't know they were there, so I need to move need to move them because the rest of them are the rest of them are just there. Now this one is how many is this wide? Where do I come from? Because this is a head. Oh, this is there, isn't it? So that goes to the sides. Try and do this as one hand, so it's quite difficult. But that's your, that's your corner. Now he did, he did say it wouldn't be perfect, perfect cuts because it was on a big machine. But I don't think you're really going to see that too much. So hopefully, we'll be good. Now, ideally, what I don't want to do is have to hand cut a load of this either. I haven't got a circular saw here. Um, like I said, there's these pieces, and there is another bit outside. So this is actually the same stuff. So that's another, one of the reasons why I got this. It might be a mil thicker, but the one outside is slightly thinner. This one's obviously far too, far too beefy. Um, but I haven't got any white paint for a base coat. And for the sake of what it is, I don't think it matters. So we've bought two of the same color. We bought five liters of blue. I think it's gonna go on a little bit darker without the white underneath. But it's so dingy and grimy in here, I really don't think it's going to make that much of a difference on camera. It's going to be a clean finish regardless, as long as I don't have the black ink marking on show, like that, for example. So I need to figure this out and space this out in no space. But if I can just stand the bottoms up like so, I can then just rest the next board on top and then just drill it in. Because even though they're small cuts, I can't just to spin them round, it'd be quite difficult to try and do by yourself. If you know, you know. Whereas if it was just dangling like that, it'll be fine. But I think for the sake of just being lazy and sort of clever at the same time, if I start at the bottom rather than at the top and make sure it fits. I think we should be good. Now, we know that we might have some spare pieces and potentially one of them isn't going to fit perfectly. So I think what I do is I'll get this corner perfect, get those three up. That's going to be a three and a bit. So rather than having to mess around with stuff, eventually I will go a little bit further down just for, for the sake of going down. But I need to make sure that the boards that I've got will cover this whole area. Um and then use whatever we've got spare. Because obviously what I don't want to do is just randomly throw them up across the top and then we're a board short or half a board short or anything like that. So give us a couple of minutes to measure it all up. Then you're going to a time lapse again. Oh, let's find some more other music. We're going through this music very, very quickly in this upload. And then hopefully I'll remember to move those. All of this will be up. That's rain. <laughs> so I've got to go to the truck to get the paint. So I'm now going to get soaked and um, smash it on with a roller. It's going to take ages to dry. It's going to be an awful look until it's done. It's going to take at least three or four coats. Yes, I know if I had a white, it would have been a lot easier. You just slap the white on, then you put the color on. I don't have it. I don't care. So it is what it is. So we'll, whatever finish we have will be the finish that we have. So let's get to it. I have composed myself and it is a two to one. So basically two stood up is exactly the same as the one going all the way across. So we're looking at three boards, obviously there. I am then going to have to use these as the off cut because it's going to have to be, you've got no, no choice for that. So that's going to be a bodged corner. Um, that's too narrow off cut. We'll figure out what we can do with that. I think that bit's going to be off camera for the live anyway. So that's going to be here. Um, and then obviously now this is where this is what i meant about making sure that i don't do it the wrong way because if i can use a full board and not have to cut anything i don't want to lose any timber now that is going to be a cut depending on the width of that that might just be one board cut in half again and it just goes beside it potentially so if we say that is one board so if that board gets donated to that side we have then got a two and a one again which will bring us to here and then we've got one board left. Or, we've got three, four, five, six, seven, we've got eight, eight bits, and we need nine. <laughs> Basically, we, we're, we, need, we need one more piece. Um, 
to do that twice on this wall. However, however, I guess what I could do is just smash it in at the bottom, smash it in the bottom, smash it in at the top, and then the next two go at the bottom, and then just get one more, get another big piece cut. Yeah, because that has to stay like that. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a thing. We'll get this bit up first. Then, like I said, I need to see how this is gonna gonna meet because that will need to be persuaded. I haven't got spirit level, and the floor's wonky and the walls are wonky, so I am not not gonna be worried about it too much. Now, luckily, I've got some big screws in up at the top, so. I just need to get them in by basically four corners to hold it. But the nice thing is, obviously, we've got the we've got all the timber to drill into, so we've got all of these bits going across. So I can just aim aim for those, and then you've got obviously another strut coming straight down, straight down the middle, just there. Then there'll be a bit of an overlap, but it doesn't matter because I can screw it into that bit, that bit at the top, and go in. Or I can just cut another noggin um, to fill that gap. That's not too much for not too much of a problem. I don't have any other that timber here but i can i can saw it up i'm just feeling lazy today i don't i don't this stuff does not cut very nicely with a handsaw and you get blisters like nobody's business but i've tried to delay it can't delay it anymore i'll grab the drill we'll get it up and then we'll get the first coat of paint on Right, that took a lot longer than it should have done, but the first six boards are up. I had to make something to the back so it's made that nice and solid. I've done the same thing at the bottom, basically just to try and cover that so there's not much of a massive gap. So it's tight enough. I mean, fact, there's nowhere there whatsoever. But when this gets pinched in, because my finger can get behind it, because the boards aren't level, the cuts aren't straight either, but he did warn me about that, so that's absolutely fine. It is what it is, isn't it? So, I mean, I could pack it out the back again and then just try and drill it in or the second i put the top one in like that there's going to be a tiny little gap at the top do we care no let's be honest i don't think it matters but it's going to be a nice clean area once it's painted now the reason why i've stopped is i've got two boards left um also i just wanted to start in this corner to see what this corner looked like i can go that way one more board obviously um, and then I could just put the next board across the top and then get 
another cut to go in there. Not too sure which way to which way to go. Or I just get this corner done just to see how the paint takes. And then add in board seven and board eight after. Because potentially for now, that might just do the trick. But I think that's what I do. I just put those two up there, get the paint on because I'm wasting time. It didn't really make a difference which way it goes. I'm gonna need more timber for there. The paint should be drying by now. And like I said, I took a bit too long trying to, trying to make that nice and tight and fancy. And to be honest, I don't even think you're gonna notice it on the camera. So it is what it is. I've tried, it's bodged. Right, I let me get these two boards up and then the paint will happen. Right, that is the timber up and as much as I can do for now. So we have got two to one, as you know, so one, two, three, and then we've got another one, two, three. Obviously we're one short because we had eight cuts, not nine. So I put this one in temporarily, that one's in, not in at all. So I just need to get a cut for here, which is absolutely fine. That then leaves us three pieces. The other piece, maybe two, but the other two bits will be this bit just here. And then that leaves us one, good piece to then carry on with or have as spare so that's not too bad so i can get another another couple of cuts out of one more board and then we'll be finished up to where that bit is just there so there'll be that bit and then that bit will be done as well unless i want to timber all the way to the far corner if i want to do that then i can and then i've just got to make that decision before i go back so i've got a couple of days to decide on that and the other thing i need is some of these now you probably saw me messing around trying to get this in nice and tight to give me something to screw into on this corner did it not massively happy with it but it's super super secure i mean they're not they're not going to go anywhere but this one here how they're supposed to be is just basically supposed to give yourself like a 50 50 overlap so it just gives you something to to drill into but this was never designed to have these boards on so i need to basically get a couple more of these so see, I can't move these, get a couple more of these and then just go behind the gap. So we are off. Basically, we're off by that much on this side. And if I was to screw this piece in, this bit will then just ping off. And then obviously I've got nothing to screw into on here. So I just need to get myself a couple of lengths. That's it. Simple as that. A couple of lengths. Just boff, 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 boff. Get a couple of spares. So if I go a little bit further down and it's done and simple, I just don't have that length to hand i don't have that timber and i don't have that girth so i just need to get that board um probably one by two or something daft like that just need to get some some of that and then we'll be we'll be good to we'll be good to go you can see it's, they're ev absolutely everywhere but i have no spares so that is that is as simple as that so what i've done is i've just quickly got myself some rocket fuel some lunch and obviously got the paint out the truck now not only have i got the paint out the truck i've got this cool thing as well so i picked up some rollers but i also got like a rolling thing so i can just pour the paint into there smash smash the paint on which i still will do because it'd be handy to know how much all of these um eight boards take up i will do all eight see how many coats i can get on and then obviously what i'll do is then put the others up paint them separately i know it's a little bit of a nightmare but if i know it's gonna be three coats i know how long it's gonna take and then it's done and then that gets spun round onto that bit. Computer and everything starts coming down. So there's a lot to do. So once that first coat of paint goes on, I'm not 100% sure what to do other than let it dry. So if that is the case, I'm gonna go back into the Lego room and get the next coat of paint on up in there. Like I said, I've got videos running simultaneously. So I will smash this on. This will drink it. So I'm hoping I can get two coats of paint on today and then a third coat and we're good potentially a fourth that's that's the problem with this with this timber it just drinks it in and then like I said I've got to figure out how I'm going to do that so I do actually want to check sooner rather than later if I can actually spin this round because if I can't then I've got to take it apart and then I need to leave enough time to be able to do that but first drink for me and then paint for you
that is how bad that looks when the first coat goes on. Then obviously it's going to dry super, super, super patchy. So I now need to run up to the Lego room, grab the other paintbrush, give it a little bit of dabbing and then leave it be for however long it takes. Now I've only done uh, six, seven boards because I've just realized that we actually only measured to come to here because that's where the original unit was. Now I need to get the tape measure out and see if this will, if I can basically cut a piece to fit in this gap and then use the remainder in there. So I'm not 100% sure if I actually need any more boards. Obviously more boards to carry on, carry on going that way. So I've got two options. I either just go well past, well past here, but I'm sure we are only going to go into this bit anyway because this is pulled so far off and this was in the corner so I would have thought we wouldn't have even come this far which gives us a good a good sort of display space already um but also I don't want to if I'm going to measure it I can't paint it so that's me I can do that I can just add a coat of paint on and screw it up at a later date still want to and still need to get another bit to go in here so even if i cut that out i can only i can't actually screw it on anyway until i get the support piece in but it does mean i could potentially finish it on that side so i will get my tape measure pencil saw if need be and um give it a give it a good go but that is in the process of drying so i don't, I don't think it looks too bad but before i do any of the measuring i will grab a paintbrush dab it in and i'll basically keep you up to date after this after the second coat goes on um and then just see where we're at with regards to the time of the day considering i just did that by eye that is not a bad cut whatsoever so it's joined across the side joined across there that is that bit done so all i've got to do is figure out what i can do with that bit paint it and forget about it that is the second coat with the roller done and that's probably the last lot of rolling i can get done in here today which is a little bit of a shame i was hoping for three um but there's absolutely no chance because it's going to get so cold outside the paint's just not going to take and there's no point happy with the finish so far um with regards to these pieces obviously i cut that one that's all fine i haven't put the piece behind it yet obviously because i've not been anywhere and i need to get all the screws so they are only in by the odd screw and i can just take them all out and then bash them all in with loads and loads of screws all at the same time so I need to get a smaller lot of screws and we'll be good to go now this piece over here that was the other bit so that's gone in that's also been painted now I only realistically need a bit of wood to go to here because this bit downwards doesn't make a difference at all so that's fine I don't need to cover that bit because nobody's going to see it and that would just be handy for extra storage and it's going to be an absolute nightmare trying to cut those pieces because you can see the shelf sticks out there and then it also sticks out there and I can't be bothered to try and make that absolutely perfect and then paint something that's going to get covered by the Kallax. So I will stack some of these back in because obviously some of these are clear and some of them are blue. So that'd be quite a nice little effect just across the bottom. I'll start to stack them back here so they're out the way. If I can, I'll try and spin this Kallax round now. Um, but then I'm also thinking, if I spin the Kallax round, I'll get the tape measure in a second. If I spin this Kallax round, have I actually got room to get to the back wall in case it needs painting again? And I think the answer is going to be no. But at the same time, I want to bring the stuff back in. And I don't want the stuff that's outside to come where I'm stood. Because I'm going to have to move it again to put it back. So... Yeah, we will we will see. And the, think about it. Those glass pieces that are there, that multicolored, I don't think that would look too bad on that shelf. Might look a little bit odd, but I might just do it. Rather than just messing around with another bit of timber. I could just Yeah, why don't I just do that? Because if I do put that there, I can still reach to get that bit of timber in. So it doesn't matter. So that Kallax is not going to be in the way of me getting that bit of timber in. So yeah, I'll do that. So all I need desperately then is the bit to go behind there so I can screw everything in. And then when I come across an off cut, which I will have somewhere, I can just fill that little gap in. Perfect. All right, we are making progress. Still doesn't solve the issue of the Kallax and me panicking going, I always have a tape measure. I guarantee it's on this side over here. 
There it is. Using the Colosseum. Look at the size of this thing. Right, so this out. Obviously, I have got some of this out there. So I could just use some of that to go in there. But like I said, I'll worry about it. Ooh, maybe that could work. I could just do a double cut. I'll do something. I'll do something. Maybe that will work. I can just cut that down quickly and then just paint it and it's done. Let me measure this first and I'll figure it out. See, I'm getting all, I'm getting in a, getting a right tizzy. I'm getting in a right tizzy. So you are there, splendid. Width of this room. Without hitting anything with the paint. Meter 60 with some space. This thing. is 146 so i have no chance <laughs> no chance at all getting around this when it's in so i am can't move that yet until this is done right i will get a bit artsy and crafty with this bit because again i actually completely forgot that that bit was there to be honest i'm not going to lie um i keep thinking we only got the thick, thicker bit not the thinner i'll mark it see what i can do with it just to get that piece in um it's going to need to be two cuts but look this good thing with this one look i can just screw it screw it and then screw it again so i can just have two smaller pieces in there bodge it with the longer bits smash its first coat on see how quickly that one drinks it put the second coat on to catch it all up and then we're we're done with the timber for these bits right on it no idea if that cut is straight but we'll soon find out and i've just slotted it in and it is exactly how i thought well <laughs> he says how i thought how i hoped it would be now what i can do is i can rest it on the table and pin it underneath then i'll see four screws top bottom top bottom because obviously there's a, another piece of timber that goes straight down there so that is fine and then the other cut i just need to do another cut on that kiss it up to here just to cover this little gap here and then it'd just be one two thanks very much good night when you are done and then everything below that it doesn't make a difference because the calyx skews behind there and that side is going to be my storage boxes and the camera's not going to see it you're not going to see it, it it's not going to matter so it, it's really not going to matter at all um and that way i can just do other bits and pieces with it so i'll get that one screwed in measure the other one up cut it cut the other one as well paint those it continues we keep going. now i know it's getting dark but i've done a thing that's all cutting i did do it it's not been bodged it looks all right i mean i say it's not been bodged <laughs> it's been bodged but visually on camera it's fine it goes around it does the trick when that calyx is in front of it you're not even going to see it so it's okay and that's all you're seeing anyway so it's not it's not too bad now i think this is good to go with regards to putting this in front of it because all of this is screwed in and I found some screws for these pieces. So I can put the Calax against there or just in front of it. I'm tempted to spin it round and push it back and get the pieces in. And I'd rather then just have to drag it back and climb over the Calax rather than having to move all of the pieces again. So I need to shift basically all these little bits and pieces that are on the floor and then just hope that that will go into this corner because that is the display side because that is potentially what is going to be used for display for something a little bit a little bit taller but i'm just looking at the window going it is going to absolutely pour down um so time lapse for you it's going to be dark put the light on it flickers so it's it's one of those i need better lighting in here but it is what it is isn't it so i'll prop you up on a shelf somewhere and get going
Well, it's in an unnecessarily heavy. God, that was a hard thing to shift. So I've now got space in front. Nothing's touching it. And now obviously I can just paint where I need to paint and just dab on that bit. I've got to do all the, the paintbrush stuff. You can see how this bit's starting to dry. We'll see what that's like when it is actually dry and we can go from there. But I don't know if that's going to work for what we had in mind. As a backdrop piece, yeah, absolutely. You can a camera set up like this. For my unboxing, that's perfect. Um, for a live stream in the corner, I don't know if it's going to work. So I don't know because they don't, I don't think they do a three. I don't know. It's a bit deceiving with all of this and stuff on top for one aspect of what I want to do. Perfect. Especially going that way with the display behind. We've got a nice bit to display sets on the wall if we need to. We've got nice space up at the top. And then also I can put some bits and pieces and just use those as storage. Beautiful. But I don't know if it eats too much into this side because you can see there's really, well, I can't, it's, what's that? Uh, four foot. That's all we've got left on that side now. So it's gone from being six to four because this is how much this sticks out. If I'm sat here, I'm going to be to this line. I don't know. I don't know if, if it will work. And if it does work and we're happy with that there and I'm not sat all the way in the corner. Because if I sat in the corner, it will be fine because you'll be like this. If I sit here and I come back, will that bit be on show? But until it's all dry, because I don't want to lean against it, I'm not going to worry about it. It is what it is. The heavy bit's in and I spun it around. That's all I care about. Worst case, I guess that just gets used somewhere else, which I don't think there is anywhere to use it. Um, the only other thing I can do is stand it up where it's three by four. But if I did that, we won't have that bit at the top for the display. So that is something I need to think about because potentially it would look better on a live stream, but maybe not as good for an unboxing video. So it's a bit of a dilemma. And it's a lot of work as well, because that'll have to come apart to be spun round. Because obviously the roof's not high enough. So there's a lot of work to spin that round. And yeah. So rather than worrying about it, which I am panicking about it, I'm just going to pretend it doesn't exist. Wait for this to dry. Come back in a couple of days because it's going to take that long. And then just see where we're at. And a few weeks later, we are back. And this is the colour it has dried. So far, so good, I think. Now, there is so much more to do. I haven't got time. I'm not going to lie. I have absolutely no more time until I get back in the country. So... We're gonna have to stop. This is what it looks like. It's dried really nicely. It's a bright, vibrant blue. So when we do the live streams and everything from here, either in that corner or against that wall or against that wall, however, I'm gonna end up doing this. More than likely, it will be like that, I would imagine. No lights are on, it's just a natural light coming through the window. We've had a huge amount of wind, rain and everything else. Roof felt has held up, so that's a bonus. No leaks, that's a bonus. That's why I've waited a little while to end this video. So I was hoping that this weekend I would actually have time to carry on with this and finish it, but I can't. I've got too much bits and pieces to do and I've not packed <laughs> standard. So I've got a lot of stuff to do. Um, yeah, so it's all, all good fun. So fingers crossed you've enjoyed the process of this. Now there is a couple of repairs that I actually do need to do. So if you can see the light that is coming through up at the top and another little bit of light that's just coming through there, some of the panelling um, across the actual unit has ripped off because of the really, really strong wind. So rather than boring you, that is actually what I'm going to be getting up to because I need to make sure that externally now it is watertight because like I said, it's not leaking through the top, but this damage has just happened. So that's basically the truth of why I can't carry on and I do actually need to pack so I'm not lying about that but guys that is it and I am done so if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel that'd be absolutely fantastic let us know in the comment section below what you think I should do what you think I should add we're going to tidy up all these different bits and pieces as soon as I can we can get the computer in here we can make this look nice we can get some different lighting in here and make that look smart as well and then get a figure out how we can get the internet and things in here and basically 
have a good fun project. But as we've done enough DIY in here, I'm not gonna bore you anymore, but I do need to basically hide any light that I can see coming through because that is the outside. And that is never a good thing. So guys, one more time, if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel, that'd be absolutely fantastic. But as always, thank you very much for watching. You look take care and have a good next one. Ta-da.